All right, moving on now, let's go ahead and take a look at, we'll make this little plus thing here. So in the previous workflow, which is not the best workflow, we would have tried to basically add some geometry to this thing and then pop it out and have it all be kind of one thing. That's a pain. We can actually build it as a separate mesh. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna create a polygon cube and uh, whatever, we'll just kind of scoot it approximately where it might need to be eventually. And then I'm going to grab these faces, tap the F key, and we'll do an extrude. So right now, you can see all of the faces are being kept together. But if I set this to off, It'll extrude them all independently, which is what I want. And I'm most, I'm not really sure if the whole thing is the right size, but I just want to make sure it's like a plus. So like everything is, is pretty quadded out. So these are not like, if I went too long, it starts to look weird. If it's too short, it looks weird. It's got to just kind of be right in the middle there. So that all of these top surfaces or top faces are about the same size. So I think that looks good. And if we zoom in here, we can actually see there's this additional inset detail. The best place to do that is at the texturing phase with Substance Painter. So that's how we're going to handle that. But there's a kind of an important concept that I want to talk about, which is, that, so we've got this uh, little gap between the controller, which has this white trim, and then this little button thing here. So I don't want to model that gap into this. I want to keep this thing as is for now but I still want to have the appearance of that gap. So what I'm going to do is this concept is, is uh, in the, uh, the olden days, we called it using floaters. And in order to properly explain what a floater is, it's kind of important to understand something about how the normal map is baked. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a very quick little example to demonstrate what's going on there. So we'll just go ahead and hide this stuff for now. I'm gonna, we'll just put it to a group by holding, uh, by tapping, selecting everything and, and tapping control G. And I'll just call it controller and hit uh, control H to hide it. I could select it and hit shift H and that'll show it. So control H is hide. And once you select it, shift H will show. So control H and I'm going to create a very simple thing here. We'll make a cube and a cylinder. So right now, the, this plane, the top surface of our cube and the top surface of our cylinder are parallel. Let me scoot this down a little bit. So because they are parallel, if I try to bake this in Substance Painter, we might get some ambient occlusion shadowing, but the normal map can't tell the difference between these two surfaces. When it looks down, it just doesn't see a change. So let me kind of demonstrate this for real in Painter real quick. All right, so I exported this geometry here as my high and this plane as my low. And then here in Substance Painter, this is the result. So we can see we're getting that ambient occlusion that the cylinder is cast. But if I go to my normal map, you can see there's absolutely nothing there. And that's problematic. You really need to make sure that your normal map is capturing this information. So how do we make sure that the normal map can see what's going on? It's actually super easy. Let me go ahead and go to vert, select, uh, convert selection to faces, and I'm going to scale this in. So if we're looking down from the top, as soon as the normal map sees a change, like a change in the surface that has some kind of a ramp, it will understand what's going on. So let me re-export this. Let 
show you what's going on here. So I'm just going to overwrite my floater high. We'll hop back over to Substance Painter and bake again. Now you can see we've got that bake, right? And obviously it's baking to a flat plane, so as soon as you, you get at a glancing angle, you can tell it's it's not real. But it is, oops, it is lighting as I rotate the light around appropriately. So you can use this to, to get some interesting effects. So let me give you an example. Let me go ahead and grab these faces again. I'm going to extrude. Tap the G key to extrude again. And I'm just uh, toggling between extrude and scale. So this surface is parallel to this surface. So if I grab this edge and I make it so the normal map can't see it, right? So we've got this surface here and this surface, they're parallel. So the normal map will not understand that there's a difference here, but then it'll totally get that there's a difference here. So let me show you what that looks like. Go ahead and re-export this. Bake our maps. So we're still getting this AO, which is a little bit of a hassle, but if I go to the normal map, you can see the only thing that's showing up is our gap there, right? So if I got rid of the, if I made this a little bit bigger, in fact, I think if I maybe just get rid of these faces, it'll probably still cast a, a ambient occlusion and I can actually, I'll show you another trick to fix that. So where were we? File, export, selection. Back over to Painter. Bake the maps. So yeah, we are still getting a separation there. So what we can do in our bake settings, we can go to the ambient occlusion. And then, right, so here it says self-occlusion. If you just say uh, only same mesh name, should work a little better. Yeah, all right. So it's not perfect. There's probably some more stuff that I could mess with, but that's the idea. So you can have things that are stacked or floating and you just build the features in that you want and then you don't have to actually carve this detail into the bottom. It's just gonna show up beautifully as it should. And we'll we'll figure out what's going on with this piece here. There's probably something that we can we can modify to make that happen. So, okay, um, that's a little bit of a, of a crash course in floaters, but as we apply them, I think Hopefully it'll it'll start to make a little bit more sense. So I'll just go ahead and get rid of all this stuff. We'll head back over to our controller, select it and hit Shift H to show it again. So what I'm gonna do is I'm basically gonna build that same kind of configuration out here. So we're gonna grab all of these faces and we'll do an extrude, edit mesh, extrude. And in this case, I do actually want everything welded. So now I'm going to select these uh, internal edges here and we'll just insert an edge loop. Actually, I think I'm going to use a different tool where I don't have to select them. Something like that. And then we can grab these faces. I'm going to have to switch out of that tool. And we'll do another extrude. So when we look straight down, this and this are gonna be parallel. So the baker's not gonna notice it, but it will see, once we do one more thing here, this gap. But this and this are also parallel, like this face here and this face, they're parallel as well as this face. So we're not actually gonna ever see this gap here except in the ambient occlusion. So what we need to do is, is uh, just add a little bit of an angle to that wall. And the easiest way to do that is just to use our insert edge loop tool here. And then, whoops. I'm just gonna hold control and backspace and delete that like original extrusion wall there, like this guy. 
and then control backspace. And to make this a little bit easier to see, if I just select these and then go to Mesh Display, Harden Edge, now when we look down, the normal map is going to understand what's going on because we've got these walls here that are describing the difference between the top surfaces and the inside surface. But we're not doing that for the main flat surface here, out here, and this wall. So we should be able to get that look here of that canyon or whatever, that little crevice there, without having to build anything into the high poly. And that is a very, very powerful feature. And then just to make this even uh, more effective, I'm going to go ahead and drop all this stuff. out here, so it is a little bit below the level. Still want it above that surface, but that should be fine. Okay, cool. We will pick this up in the next video.